Welcome back to Universe. I'm Andrew, and today I'm playing Earthborn Rangers, and this is day five of my campaign playthrough. Unfortunately, it's looking like day four recording was lost. The entire file folder vanished from my computer. It literally just disappeared and took everything with it, except actually the microphone audio recording. So if you're really interested in just an audio version of the episode, you can poke me in the comments. I might put up a an unlisted video that is just the sound of my voice playing through it. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to catch up on that previous episode. And if you want to start from the beginning and you haven't already, there's a link in the description to the playlist where you can watch from episode one. But I'm going to assume you have not listened to or watched in any way uh, day four. There were some tense moments, but fortunately, I, I think nothing hugely story impactful uh, happened that we won't be able to easily catch up on now. The biggest thing is that at the start of day four, I needed to read entry 1.04 and also 94.7. Uh, 94.7 .7 was actually just an entry referring back to the fact that I needed to find and rescue Lun. And I did that in day three. And so this was just a checkup to see whether I had completed that mission. And since I had, I got a little boon of one energy to start the day with. So let's read 1.04. It is actually printed right on the campaign tracker. And that is the last one that is printed on. The rest are written in. It says, you wake up in the morning, to a dark sky thick with clouds. Rain is falling on the head of the valley in thick sheets and the creek near your camp has spilled over its banks. Before you finish packing, a familiar figure approaches your camp. It's Cal Ivor. Make haste, he calls. Areas southeast of Lone Tree are flooding. It was that ridiculous shaper. Came to water the hanging gardens and instead created an entire storm front. Elder Thrush is sending teams across the upper valley for rescue and relief efforts. You must go to White Sky, Kobo's Market, and the Golden Shore if you can get there in time. Make sure everyone is safe, then provide whatever aid you can. This could have been avoided, Cal says, mostly to himself. He looks down the trail in the direction of Lone Tree, then back to you. I would accompany you, but Eclipse and I have been tasked with finding Ale. Maybe he can fix the mess he's created and put a stop to this rain. You're on your own. Good luck. You're going to need it. As if on cue, a peal of thunder rattles the air. Gain the Rising Waters mission. You'll have to move fast to beat the waters. Record 94.2 two days from now, day six. On the campaign tracker at the start of that day, read that journal entry. So I have not completed the Rising Waters mission, though I did start it. So we can take a look at what that mission is. Uh, you can see it affects or it can be worked. Uh, completed in White Sky, Kobo's Market, and Golden Shore. It says to use these modified entries for the locations. And it's talking about cards with floods attached to them. And you want to clear floods. It says have three progress on this mission. Uh, in the previous day, I was able to clear two. So I actually have two progress on this mission. And during the recording, I was not sure. But I'm pretty sure it's got uh, the Rising Waters. I'm going to It uses actual progress. So I'm pretty sure I actually get to record that to progress. Whereas with my lore quiet mission, I've been resetting it every day because I don't think I get to track the prey that has been um, accrued from day to day. But since Rising Water specifically uses progress, I think I do. So I'm, I'm gonna keep my two progress that I got on day four. So I just need one for day five. One more thing with a flood and this will be completed. Now to go along with this, our weather has changed. We've been starting with a perfect day, but we are now in a downpour. We're also in uh, started day four in a downpour as well. In this search with four rain and on a sun challenge icon, I discard a rain, take a fatigue, and if there's no rain left, flip it over. But the rising waters mission on the mountain icon adds a token to the weather. So it just never stopped raining uh, all day on day four. If I get rid of that mission, may, the rain might actually end. Now, I believe day three ended when I finally had rescued Lun and I was at Lone Tree Station. Uh, and then in day four, I left from Lone Tree and I actually was able to take like a floating car thing, not a floating car, but a like a cable car uh, from Lone Tree and I skipped a location. So I didn't go to the Ancestors Grove and I didn't go to Boulder Field. I skipped and went to Kobo's Market, which is where I am now. And this is also where the flooding is happening. Uh, it's one of those three locations listed on the mission. And this is where I made the progress on helping out with floods. I did meet a character from the Valley set um, and I cleared her. She was caught up in the flood, but I rescued her and she offered me a mission. She's an exile from the north, the Icelands, and she wanted to help help me find her a home. Uh, but I declined it because of the flood going on. I just knew I wouldn't have time. Plus, it was one of those missions that ends at the end of the day. 
It just wasn't going to happen. So not much missed there. Maybe I'll meet her again uh, and actually do the mission. Someone I did meet again, actually, and do her mission was at Lone Tree Station. Spirit Speaker Now, whom I met at the end of day three, uh, I met right off the bat by coincidence at the beginning of day four. And so I accepted her mission. Um, and I did complete that, although I fudged the rules a bit because I was supposed to read a modified entry for Kobo's Market, and you have to read the normal entry in order to be able to complete her mission. But I kind of assumed that that was what was going on. I didn't see any thematic reason why she shouldn't be happy to have been delivered to where she wanted to go just because it happens to be raining. So I cheated and read the normal entry just to be able to uh, complete that mission. And that did give me a reward card, which is Nal's Understanding. So one spirit cost, two connection icons. It adds five progress to a being, but if it doesn't clear them, you have to resolve each of their challenge effects, even if they are exhausted. So it's a lot of progress uh, for one cost, but I haven't added to my deck yet because I haven't, I wasn't able to camp. Just in case you're feeling like you missed out on the Spirit Speaker Now conclusion, I'll just skip some of this, but just 16.1 um, says that she meets with a woman and they speak in a language that we don't recognize. And then we help them try to speak with a spirit. She says, I can hear the spirit of the Redessa again, but it's muffled like a whisper. It's like she's distracted, searching for something that she's lost. She's going to go back to Lone Tree, and we gain the Spoke with a Spirit tag on the campaign tracker. So that's pretty much the recap. So I just need to finish the Rising Waters mission uh, before day six. So today. Uh, but I just need to clear one card with a flood. So let's just finish doing our location setup and everything, and we'll see what that flood means. So Kobo's Market is a one threshold location, or one uh, presence for threshold. We can haggle here using focus and connection, and this basically lets us swap gear between our collection and our deck, so I'm not really interested in that at this point. Uh, it says entry 16, although Rising Water says to use the modified entry 1.05, and then we'll read that, and then search the path deck for the next feature and put it into play. So we'll do that after we read 105, which is actually an errated entry. So I've got it printed out here. I'm going to Kobo's Market. So it says, from far off, you can hear the shouts of alarm. You can just make out the dell that holds Kobo's Market through the driving rain. The water around the main structure is already knee deep, and you can see Ren Kobo's porters saving what goods they can, retreating to the upper balcony. Gain the Rising Waters mission. You'll have to move fast to beat the waters. Record 94.2 two days from now, day six. Divert the flood by clearing beings and features while they have a flood card attached. Set up the new location, refresh, and draw path cards for the new round. Then perform the following based on how many days have passed since starting the mission. It's now one. Uh, so I'm going to, and previously on day five or four, I searched the general set for two flood cards, shuffled them into the path deck. But now today here, I'm going to search the general set for two flood cards, shuffle them in the path deck, but then uh, or shuffle one in and attach the other to the being or feature in play with the highest presence. So I'm going to grab a feature from the path deck, but I'm also going to then attach this flood card to it. So let's see what feature I get from the setup. Ooh, this is pretty good. I got the morning route. So this is going to be within reach, zero presence. Just two harm or three progress to clear it. With fit and reason, I can slice it, add harm to it, suffer a fatigue, but choose ranger to soothe three fatigue. So this is a pretty harmless one, should be pretty easy to clear. And then I'm gonna attach this flood to it. So flood was also errated, so that's why it's a printout in the sleeve there on top of the original card. But it says when it enters play or the attached card leaves play without being cleared, Attach this flood to the non-ranger feature or being with the highest presence that are, doesn't already have a flood. Move it along the way. And if there are no cards attached to it, read 1.06. And then on a sun, it will add a flood to the attached card. And on a crest, it will check to see if there are more flood counters than the presence of the card. Uh, and then that would clear it or that would discard it without clearing it. And each ranger takes three fatigue. So we don't want things to get washed away. So the presence of zero means if it even gets a single flood tap counter, um, it could easily get washed away. But fortunately, it should be easy enough to clear, which will give me my third uh, progress on the Rising Waters mission. So I'll start the round by drawing a path card as normal. And we got an Artelope, which I'd started day four with the full intention of really trying to lure quiet. And then this whole flood thing happened. So I'm still looking out for potential prey here. So we got a prey, an Artelope. It's going to be within reach and one presence. Oh, the morning route should also be within reach. Oh no, the flood does move it along the way. 
Nope, so it's, it's getting washed away here, which means the artelope is kind of in between me and it. So might want to do something about the artelope first. And then step two is ranger turns. I can start to do stuff. Probably should have mulliganed, but technically the mulliganing is supposed to happen before all the setup stuff. And since I'm on day five, I'm going to try to hold myself to a little stricter standard here. I need to start mulliganing first. I don't think any of my cards are really going to help me right now. I'm going to start by using the common test to the avoid this artelope. So I'm going to spend awareness and conflict icons. I'm going to spend my two awareness energy. I have to spend at least one energy. And I think I'm going to spend zero conflict icons from my hand. So I'm going to stick with two I need. It says X, which X refers to the presence. In this case, it's one. So I need a one. If I draw a minus one, I'll be fine. So draw a card from the challenge deck here, looking at awareness in green. It's a zero. So my two stands and two is greater than or equal to one. So I get to exhaust it. And that means it won't fatigue me when I interact with the morning route and I don't have to worry about its challenge icons resolving. But I do need to check for crest challenge icons in play. This one says if there are two active predators, but there are not. The flood says if the number of flood tokens on the attached card is greater than its presence. Well, it's not because there's uh, zero presence, but also zero flood tokens. Zero is not greater than zero. And the artelope is exhausted, so none of them resolved, which means that will trigger my scepter of harmony. This has that setup keyword, so I got to start with it in play. It starts with one song. And it says, after you perform a test in which no challenge effects were resolved, add a song. So I now have a second song token on my scepter, which is good because as a shaper, I'll need those songs to play manifestation cards later, probably. That fully resolves my test. And now I would like to try to clear the morning route. And I cannot use connection because that only adds progress to beings. And I don't currently have any of my equipment that would let me add harm to it. I can use its own test, fit plus reason, to add one harm to it, and then I would so uh, take one fatigue and soothe three. So I'd net a card in hand, but I'd have to do it twice, so I'm not loving it. I think I'm just going to try to traverse the morning route, which is awkward, but fit plus exploration icons, I can add progress equal to my effort. Hopefully I don't fail, but I only, X again is referring to presence and on the morning route as a zero. So I'm going to go ahead and try to traverse this. I'll go ahead and do two because I do want to end up with at least two, which means I might want to commit one exploration so I get a three in case I hit a minus one on the challenge card. And sure, I'm going to commit familiar ground, which has uh, an exploration icon. Actually, I'm going to commit seen through cycles for its exploration icon because it's also a manifestation card. And we'll see why in a second. Uh, so that is three effort committed. If the artelope were ready, it would fatigue me equal to its presence of one, but that's why I exhausted it. Fatigue would put cards from my deck into my fatigue stack and run my deck out faster, forcing me to the end of the day. So let's check for fit in red. I got a zero, so a three total, and I just needed a two. So that will add three progress here. It's harm threshold, or har it will add, yeah, three progress. Oh, it's, oh man, I'm glad I got three because, um, yeah. I needed, it clears with two harm, and the red mixed me up because I was using fitness, but the fitness is adding progress, and its progress threshold is in blue. So I'm glad I got three, because uh, I did need the three. I was thinking I needed two, but that would be wrong. So I had to get to add three progress, which clears it, sending it to the discard pile. That triggers the rising waters. When a flood card with a flood attached is cleared, place progress on this mission and shuffle the flood into the path deck. So the flood will go back into the path deck, which is just above the camera, along with the challenge deck. And now that there are three progress on here, I can read in green, it says uh, 1.07. With some quick thinking and a lot of backbreaking work, you managed to redirect the worst of the flood waters and save what you can. Thanks to your efforts, this location is through the worst of it. Check off the bubble matching your current location next to rising waters on the campaign tracker. Remove all progress from its mission card. Then if all three locations are complete, read the following. Oh, it's definitely not all three. Check off the bubble matching your current location next to rising waters on the campaign tracker. Well, there's no bubble. I don't know what it's talking about. Progress check boxes, but those aren't bubbles. I don't see any bubbles. It's the back of the campaign guide as a campaign tracker, but it's the same thing. There's no bubbles. 
I have no idea what it's talking about. Also, I don't see how I'm supposed to do all three locations. It took me basically the entire day four to get to Kobo's Market and then get two done. I mean, I'm off to a good start here, but they wanted me to travel twice. I'm at the market and they want me to go to White Sky and the Golden Shore. So I have to go from here, travel, travel, clear three floods, travel, travel, clear three more floods in one day. That seems a bit wild. All right, so I just looked online. I found a forum thread where one of the designers chimed in about this and um, apparently these three diamonds next to rising waters are the bubbles that are being referred to and the way you know which one to check off is that on the mission card the three locations are shown so you're just supposed to know that from left to right Three, White Sky Kobo's Market Golden Shore refers to the left, middle, and right diamond boxes, which is wildly unclear and never explained. It's like a logic puzzle that you're supposed to figure that out. I'm amazed that is not an FAQ yet. Kind of mad right now because I've been really enjoying the game and now I'm finding this part extremely frustrating. Because that means these pr two progress I have should not be checked off. Um, because apparently those are supposed to be used for the locations, except for that it clearly says the word progress right here, and the mission uses progress tokens. So not only was I not supposed to use the progress for the progress, but I was supposed to figure out that the progress is supposed to be spatially related to these locations. And the concern I had in the previous The Lost Day episode was that my progress on the mission was going to be lost because I'd been so used to this lore quiet mission. Uh, and then I was relieved when I realized, oh, the progress, I get to I get to track my two progress and finish later. And apparently I'm not supposed to be able to do that. I've only just now gotten one of the three progress and I'm expected to go to the other two locations in an extremely limited amount of time. So I'm going to go ahead and continue dealing with the flood. I'm going to try to get to another location and see what the best I can do. But I'm not happy about it. And I'm also not going to roll back the fact that, I mean, mechanically, I guess I wasn't supposed to have these two progress coming into this day. Uh, but I'm going to keep it because not keeping it would frustrate me even more. So um, I'm just going to remember the fact that Kobo's market has been dealt with rather than bubbling in. Well, I can, I can erase it now since one location is complete. So sure, I'll erase the bubble that refers to White Sky and leave the one that is referring to Kobo's market. Now I need to try to leave. All right, so I got to finish resolving my test with the crest icon, but that doesn't resolve and this doesn't resolve. So I will take song and now I can't even traverse the location, which I didn't think I was going to need to do. Um, but I, I just spent my fitness. I will use my roll card, which says I can exhaust it to choose a manifestation of my discard and add it to my hand. So that is why I chose to commit scene through cycles because it's a manifestation that I can pick back up with my roll card. And I guess I can uh, try to connect with the Artelope. I wanted to get it out of the way ASAP, but now I'm gonna have to go into the next round. I may as well spend my uh, energy. So let's commit three spirit to a connect test. I don't think I'll commit any connection icons. Let's just try to connect to add progress to it. It has a five threshold, so I'm not gonna clear it now. Uh, but three, I mean, I could commit a ton of hearts, but I won't. All right, uh, so three. I got a zero, so I get to add three progress to it. And then I need to resolve the sun, which is going to discard one rain and fatigue me for one. And then I have one focus. I could haggle, but I'm not really interested in haggling. I could remember and try to draw a card. Yeah, what the heck? Let's do it. I'm not going to commit any icons. Blue is zero, so I get to scout one ranger card. Look at it from the top of my deck. I'll put that on the bottom and then draw one card and then resolve the mountain, which adds a token to the weather. So it's not going to stop raining anytime soon. And that'll end the round and skipping step three travel because I don't have the progress on the location that I need. I'll have to do that next round. And then step four will ready all cards in play. My role and the Artelope are both among them. Get to re-energize and draw a card and then start a new round by drawing a path card, which is a blood beckoned Velox has ambush. So it's going to be within reach of me and ambush means it fatigues me right away for two. So I'll take two more cards, put them in my fatigue stack. If a ranger is injured, it gains disconnected, which I, I think that means it cannot be cleared through progress. It's going to be annoying. Actually... I think I have the answer to that. So that's gonna come out. The Artelope is almost cleared. Uh, but I definitely, I'm gonna wanna get 
probably both of these out of the way and then traverse. I'm going to start by dealing with the Artelope, I think. I'm just going to do another spirit uh, test to connect. Just going to commit three. I just need a two so I can take a minus one. Oh, but I got the minus two. Got the minus two. So the three becomes one and I only get to add one progress. I needed five. I think I'll be okay, actually. Uh, then I need to resolve the crest if there are two active predators, but there's only one. This one says if there's one or more harm on this being, but there's not. This says if a ranger's injured, but it's not. So I get another song up to four. And then this is the reshuffle icon. So this and all the other uh, discarded challenge cards that I've revealed so far go back into the challenge deck. All right, then I think I'm just going to use a Scepter of Harmony's bottom ability. I can exhaust it and spend X songs to add X progress. So I'm going to exhaust it and spend one of my four songs to add one progress to the Artelope. I should have just done that for two, probably. I could have avoided making that test. Not that making tests is the worst, but I could have spent my spirit on something else, but um, that's okay. All right, so the Artelope is now cleared. So normally it would go to the discard pile, but because I have this lore quiet mission, um, it says that I'm going to be, whenever I clear prey, I set it aside here. It resets each day, but if I ever travel with five presents worth of prey attached, uh, I'll complete this mission or at least move on to the next step of the mission. So that's one out of five. Not a top priority in the middle of the flood, but we'll make some progress on it every day before resetting it each time. And then for the Villox, I'm going to play Sky Whip. So this has cost me zero awareness, uh, but it is a manifestation, so I do have to spend a song in order to be able to play it. Costs, uh, or then I get to make this test. Awareness plus conflict to strike. So I'm going to spend two awareness on this has a harm threshold of three, so I do want to get a three. If I want to guarantee, I need I need a five, because then if, even if I get the minus two, five minus two is three, and I would get to clear it with harm, because I'm going to add harm equal to my resultant effort. I also get to exhaust it, so I don't have to clear it. I could just rely on the exhaust, and I have no conflict. I, I have one conflict icon in my hand, so I guess it's pretty unlikely that it's getting cleared here. I might just rely on the fact that I'm going to be exhausting it either way. All right, so I'll stick with two then, and got a minus, got the minus two. Oh, oh yeah. So because there is no number there, the default number is one, which is pretty bad because anything less than a one is a fail, and two minus two is zero. So that is a fail, which means I don't add any progress, and I don't even exhaust it. So that is quite bad. Then I need to resolve the sun effect, which discards a rain and fatigues me, and then reshuffle the one card that could really screw me over. Well, now I can't even safely try to traverse the market with the Vilox in the way, but I don't care. I'm not that interested in sticking around here. Um, I'm still going to try to traverse using the common traverse test fitness plus exploration. I commit two fitness. I need four because that is the progress threshold here. And I'm going to commit bold, which has two exploration icons and familiar ground, which has one for a total of five. Because the Velox is within reach, which is between me and the surroundings, I'm going to have to get exhausted by it or fatigued by it for two. So two more fatigue. So really stacking up, but I don't feel like lingering here. So five. And plus one is six, so I get to add six progress to the location. Resolve the mountain, which adds a token to the weather. And the Velox says if there's no active prey and Whispering Fields is in play, but it's not. So that goes to the discard. I will use Prodigy the Floating Tower to return a manifestation to my hand, re uh, reclaim the Sky Whip. And I think I'll skip the Remember test this round and just move on to step three, Travel. The location has progress. I just added six equal to its seeding its threshold four. I can travel. So remove all path cards from play. Velox is gone. Choose a new location and assemble the path deck. All right. So I'm leaving Koba's market and I need to get to white sky or the uh, golden shore. But either way, I think the fastest way is going to be to go to the boulder field. So I'm traveling by way of grassland. So I'm going to be using the same encounter or, uh, path deck that I just used. Uh, when you're going to a non-unique location, you also use three random cards from the valley set. So I'm going to shuffle the three that I had, pull out of three random ones to mix with the grassland. And I don't think I'm going to be using the floods, the two floods from the general set, which were shuffled into the rising waters mission because they're specifically for these three locations. So I don't think the boulder field is flooded. All right, so we're going to be at the boulder field now. One presence, four per ranger to clear, so four. 
Reduce the presence of all beings in play by one. And we got the entry number 14. It says, long ago, a great mountain once stood here, but as the millenniums passed, it steadily split and crumbled. At the edges of the boulder fields, the ground is littered with round rocks the size of apples. As you head deeper in, however, the boulders grow larger until you find yourself weaving between what you imagine to be the bones of the lost mountain, pillars of rock that reach toward the sky. The lead ranger needs to draw a challenge card and do the following based on the challenge icon. All right. We got a crest to scout three path cards and then draw two of them or draw two path cards. So take the path deck that I just shuffled up and did in the way that I described. So it's grasslands plus three random cards from the valley set that I haven't looked at yet. I get to scout three. So I'm going to look at them. Got an old bloody clicker that looks bad. Uh, so I think I'm just going to not read that and choose to put that on the bottom. The whispering fields was a card that really frustrated me. Actually, this might have caused some of my delays in the uh, lost episode day four. So if you want to pause and read that one, uh, I found it to be <laughs> pretty frustrating. And uh, a morning route. So another one of these, which I think I have no problem with. So I'm going to send old bloody clicker and the whispering fields to the bottom and then draw a morning route and two surprises. We got uh, Velox and a harvester ant hill. All right, so these are both within reach. The Velox will ambush me, fatigue me for two more. That will complete the arrival setup. Put that out, take a look at the ant hill. This is an obstacle, so I cannot travel or even traverse or interact with the surroundings at all uh, while it's out or while it's ready. Its presence though is zero because there's no harm on it. So you don't bother the ants, they don't bother you. If you have any hungry scroffs, which are like wild boar looking things uh, on a mountain symbol, they will mess with the ants. And if you try to prog uh, make progress on the ant hill, it can turn into harm which of course will get them riled up. So I just ignored them before uh, in day four because I wasn't trying to le get leave. I was trying, I was in Kodo's, Kobo's market and there were like two ant hills, but I didn't care because I wasn't trying to go anywhere and they were along the way and I was just trying to deal with flooded things. So I just let the ant hills sit, but now I am kind of in a hurry. So that was step three travel and now we can go ahead and refresh. So I will ready and energize and draw. And then I still have to draw another path card for the next round. It is a valley card. We found the fundamentalist. He's got an entry number 86. He's gonna be within reach. He's friendly, which is nice. Reduce the presence of all other beings in the same area as the fundamentalist by one. All right, that would have been nice a second ago when the Velox ambushed me. If he has one or more harm, he can heal it. If there's a predator though, it will attack him on a crest. All right, so let's read 86. 86.4. Oh no, 86.2. Fragrant smelling tree. You've heard of the so-called fundamentalist and you watch with interest as he carefully lifts and inspects each plum in turn. Occasionally one comes off the tree and he tucks it into a rucksack. When you see him notice you, you call out and ask what he's doing. He frowns at you. What does it look like? I'm taking plums. Only the ones that are just about ready to fall off the tree, obviously. What are you doing? Clear the fundamentalist with progress to ask him about his way of life. Well, it's just three. I am in a hurry, but we'll see. Put that out within reach. Uh, so he's not going to fatigue me. The Velox now, if I ignore it, will fatigue me for one because its presence has been reduced. <sighs> I mean, I'm interested to learn about him, but I also need to keep moving. There's a flood going on. Today's the last day I can deal with it. All right, well, I picked back up my Sky Whip for a reason. So let's go ahead and play that. I'm going to spend a song. That puts me down to one song, but got to do what you got to do. And we're going to make that awareness plus conflict test on the Velox. Try to get it out of the way. Still just one conflict I'm not interested in spending. Uh, so, well, hmm. I could get a plus one, but I guess I really just need to exhaust it. So two, got a zero. So that will add two harm. It's not a three, but I don't need three. Just two will be enough to exhaust it. One would have been enough as well, because again, no number means the fault of one. Resolve the sun means remove a rain and get a fatigue. Harvester Anthill says if there's one or more progress here, but there's not. So that will be it. Then I'm gonna play Artel's Vaulting Rod. So I'm just trying to avoid this anthill. I'm gonna spend one fit to play that because that's the cost. It's gonna have two vaults on it. Although I'm gonna spend one right away. Uh, exhaust this and use a vault to exhaust an obstacle. So we're gonna exhaust the anthill. We're gonna vault right over it. I can also go fishing, but there's no water in play actually. And that will take up the rest of my gear. So between my scepter and my vaulting rod now, 
Uh, my gear slots are completely full. But one more vault and this will be discarded anyway. So now I'm going to try to get past this boulder field. Let's see if I can do it with one and then a bold for making a total of three. Three and a zero. So that's not going to do it. I get three progress by needed four. Resolve the sun. That's another rain down and another fatigue taken. And well, now I may as well use my spirit on the fundamentalist because I'm not going to be leaving traveling this round. So let's use the basic spirit plus connection test to connect. We're going to do three and sure I'll come in the green thumb to make that four and I got a zero. So that's four progress added to him. He clears with three. So I'll read his entry 86 again, this time going to 86.4. You ask Tycor why the others in the valley call him the fundamentalist and he cocks his head for a moment. Do they? He asks. I suppose I haven't been into any of your villages in a while. He thinks for another moment, then abruptly speaks. I guess it's because of how I live, he says. I don't see us having any right to build houses and lay down roads across this valley. That's just us imposing our will on the rest of the world, which we have no more right to do than any other animal. You ask if humans' sapience changes the situation at all, and he waves his hands as if driving off a fly. You sound like all the rest. No, no. Our sapience just means we should recognize our capacity to change the world, and then make the conscious choice to reject that. As he talks, he starts to pack his things. In a minute, he is ready to leave. Unless you ask him to stay, he's clearly going to head out. I can choose to have him stay and help me remove all progress from the fundamentalist and move him. Or I can say goodbye and soothe to fatigue. Well, I guess he's helping me by reducing presence, um, but I think I'm okay. I'm just going to soothe to fatigue and let him go on his way picking plums. So two fatigue comes off my fatigue stack and goes into my hand. That doesn't uh, elongate my day at all, but it gives me some more options. And resolve the mountain adds one token to the weather. Back up to three. And this is exhausted. This is exhausted. But the morning route says if there's an active prey, but there's not. All right. So that's it. And again, I won't spend my focus. So let's ready everything. Energize and draw and draw a path card another artilope when i think i forgot to return a manifestation so i get the sky whip back i guess i'm just gonna sky whip again on the velox i just need a one but can i risk only committing one this is also going to cost me on my last song all right i'm going to commit one and a conflict so i'm keeping one awareness energy uh, but spending one and then committing a conflict so that's two and plus one all right well so i got a three which means i get to add three progress to it and that will clear it and exhaust it resolve the sun which takes away the rain and gives me a fatigue artilope says if there's an active card with two or more presents but there's not and hill zero the morning route is a zero then i think I'm going to return that to my hand again, and I'm going to use an avoid tech on the artilope. So I'm going to commit my other awareness because you have to spend at least one energy to do a test. And I'll commit the sky whip this time for the conflict to avoid. So two, I need a one because it has an X and the presence is one. Got a minus one, so just barely did it. That's another fatigue from the rain, and that will exhaust the artilope though. So now I can go ahead and use my other vault to get rid or exhaust the anthill. The vaulting rod has the ability that when there are no vaults here, discard it. Most gear can stay in play with no tokens, but not the vaulting rod. Then I'm going to traverse. I only need one. So hopefully I don't get a minus one. I'm not going to commit any icons. So just, or minus one is fine. Minus two is bad. Got a zero. So I could add two progress to the location. Resolve the crest. It says if there's two active predators, but there's not. Artilope is exhausted, so I actually get a song. So that's nice. And now I can travel, but first I'm going to play Static Sifter. So after I add one or more harm to a flora, I can add a Vittle to this. So I couldn't have played this while I had the Vaulting Rod out, but because uh, it takes one of my five spots, and the Vaulting Rod was three of them. And I can also use the Vittles to soothe two fatigue. So if I can harm flora, I can get a lot of soothing. But my deck is already getting very small. Just seven cards left. I don't know how I'm going to clear three flooded things. And I don't really have a way to harm the morning route. Oh, I need to spend two spirit for that. So I think I'm just traveling here. Get rid of the path deck again. And the location. All right, this time I'm going from the boulder field to white sky. So it's going to take me through the woods. So And because white sky is this unique location, I'm going to use the woods and the specific 
cards for White Sky and combine those. All right, so we are at White Sky, Presence of One, three to travel. Uh, we can search to scout path cards, which if I recall, there's somebody with a boat here. So I might be able to take a shortcut. Like, I think it's a long shot that I can actually clear three floods here. But if I did and I wanted to be able to go to the other location, I might be able to skip going around the lake uh, and get a boat as I did in uh, day one. It says to read entry three, but we're going to read a modified entry because of the mission. And then after that, I'm going to draw one path card. So I'll wait to draw it until I've read the setup because I think it's going to tell me to shuffle some floods in. The wind has been rising steadily and now is blowing the rain in huge sheets across the lake. Swelling tributary streams threaten to overtake the shoreline. Animals and villagers alike flee to safety lest they be caught. And then yes, the same thing we read before because we're on, it's been one days since our mission started. So I'm going to Shuffle one in and attach the other to the being or feature with the most presence. And that is after resolving setup, which was to draw one card. We got a wolfhound, which is going to be within reach, but it's going to get a flood and the flood will move it, wash it away to along the way. Shuffle the other flood into the deck. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to get three. Although if I hit another sun without hitting a mountain, the rain might actually stop for a second. All right, so that was the travel step. We'll finish the round by doing the refresh step, ready, get energy, and draw. And then start the next round by drawing a path card, uh, which is the angler. He's friendly, he wants to go fishing. If there's a water card in play, soothe to fatigue and add a token to each food. Well, there is a water card in play. It's the flood that is washing away this wolfhound. Uh, but sure, we can go fishing there. Although I have to get a two to succeed. So I don't wanna waste my Focus. I would need a plus one because I only have one focus. So I'd have to commit icons and then I don't have any foods. So I don't know. He might just hang out within reach over here. Actually, I'm supposed to read his entry, which is 48. I was going to skip it because I read it before. But uh, if I found the perfect fishing spot, which I have, he might. He, let's see. He's going to give me a different entry. You catch sight of Artel perched on a rock just offshore, staring at the ripples where a fishing line sits undisturbed amid the gentle waves. The angler looks in your direction and calls to you. I don't suppose you're on your way to Golden Shore again. Clear our tail with progress to discuss another fishing trip. Eh, not a priority. I don't know how I'm going to clear this wolfhound. Actually, what the heck? Uh, let's do a spirit test. I'm going to spend one spirit and commit engaging, which says that the number of connection icons that, uh, on this attribute is equal number of spirit in your pool. I'm leaving two for that reason. So one energy is committed and then these two icons... Two more brings us up to five total, and I'll spend Versatile for its icon, uh, ignoring its ability. So that is six. I need six, exactly, to clear it. Yeah, let's uh, let's hope for the zero. So Spirit Test, got a zero. All right, so six will do it. Six progress on the Wolfhound, we'll clear it, and that puts one progress on the mission and shuffles this into the deck. Unfortunately, I hit a mountain, which adds a, more rain to the weather. All right, now... Let's use awareness to search or scout the path deck. And I actually want a flood, which will then attach to Artel and wash him away. But then I can clear him and uh, discuss a fishing trip and save him from the flood at the same time. So, two. And I just spent all my connection icons. Well, not all of them. But I just have two more cards left in my hand as well. So I'm just going to stick with the two. I just need a one. Got the minus two. So that's lucky. That will also... Spend a rain and give me a fatigue and a reshuffle. So by some crazy chance of luck, I managed to get two more floods cleared here. There's still no way I'm getting to the other location. Um, so I'm not even going to bother trying to traverse this location. I could get some progress on it, but I don't care. That's another test that I would have to do and another chance at taking fatigue. So I'm going to prioritize trying to finish this location's three floods in hopes that that gives me a more beneficial mission conclusion, even though I can't get to all three. At least that maybe I can get to two. It seems like a long shot that I can even get to two at this point, but it's better than one. So I think all I've got left to do is return a manifestation to my hand. And I think it's going to be Sky Whip again. And then just end the round. Ready, energize, draw, and draw a path. And it is a Sunberry Bramble. It's a simple little flora which I can actually use with my Static Sifter. Let's see, Awareness. I need my Awareness to search. 
Also, though, this is going to fatigue me because uh, even though it is a little plant, it's also brambly and has a presence of one and is between me and the surrounding. So awareness plus reason, pluck two, add one harm and soothe two fatigue. All right. I never got my little shovel. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to spend two spirit and a song to be a wizard. I'm going to play. Oh, that doesn't work. Choose a being in play and shuffle into the path deck and search the path deck and discard for a being and put into play. Uh, actually, I, I want to leave Artel. I was thinking I was going to replace the Bramble, but it is not a being. It is a feature. Flora. Food. So I'll keep my song and my spirit. And why does it have to be a two? And I need a reason icon? I would like to do this test and soothe some fatigue and maybe get a couple more cards to work with. But if I spend all my awareness, I can't search for a flood to drown Artel. No, I would save him. I would save him. All right, I guess I'm going to have to get lucky. I'm going to commit one energy and one reason icon. That's all the icons I have. I could spend the other energy, but I want to save that to make another awareness test. So we're going with two. I need two. And I got a minus one. But I'm going to spend my focus. Play Throng of Life. It costs me a song because it's a manifestation. And I get to choose which modifier. So instead of minus one, I'm going to choose a zero. So I get to keep the two, which is enough to add one harm to this feature. And it doesn't even get rid of it. But adding harm to the feature does give me a vittle. And I get to soothe two fatigue. And now I need to choose an additional challenge icon to resolve. So I'm going to resolve red. And I'm going to choose yellow. The crest and the sun. So the sun will discard a rain and fatigue me. But now with three cards left in my deck, uh, the downpour finally ends. And we flip this card to a gathering storm has zero rain on it and during their fresh step it gets two rain and when there are four or more the rain starts all prey moves along the way each ranger exhausts their roll and then it flips back to the rainy side with focus plus reason i can find shelter to discard rain from it for every two effort and then the crest says if there are two active predators but there are not if there's an active predator but there's not so for that one i'll get a song and then i will exhaust my status static sifter and spend the vittle to soothe two so i got a lot more cards oh and i got my trowel my little shovel so that was what i was kind of looking for digging for if you will so i'm going to spend two fitness to play that and oh, i have to use spirit i have to use spirit all right well i'm just going to play it now i might not use the tend ability the bottom ability isn't really relevant. That lets me attack very inefficiently, add harm to beings. Uh, but spirit plus reason, I can tend to flora, adding or removing harm, which would be another way to get rid of the bramble. Actually, no, I probably do want to do that before I search, because then the bramble will fatigue me. So I guess we're doing that spirit test now. doesn't have a number, so it's a one. But And I only need to add one more effort to clear it. Don't know what else I'm going to spend my effort on, or my spirit on. Well... If I do find a flood, I'm going to want to clear Artel. So I'm going to spend two spirit and save one, just enough to make another test if I'm lucky. So let's just keep the two. Uh, minus two will suck, but uh, zero. So two stands, I add two harm. That's enough to clear it. And when I add any amount of harm, I also get a vittle, which I can't use now because it's exhausted, but that's fine. The trowel is taking up the last two spots in my gear equipment. Uh, resolve the mountain, which adds a token to the weather so that Rain is starting to gather up already. I'm going to use this Prodigy of the Floating Tower to pick up a throng of life. And let's use the search. I need, I mean, a one is good enough if I get a zero, but I won't, if I get a minus one, that'd be really stinky. So I'm going to commit a versatile, so I have two, and let's go with that. Now, you know what? I'm going to commit a throng of life as well. Make it four, or make it three. So three plus one is four, so I get to scout four off the path deck. All right, so looking for floods, really. There's two floods. So I'm going to spend these non-flood cards to the bottom. Although, if there are no cards to attach to, read 1.06, which is the general... Well, I kind of want to read that ahead of time to know what's going to happen. But maybe I need a Sitka buck for it to attach to. All right, so I'm going to put one buck... Well, let's do flood buck, flood buck. Put those back on top and then draw one. And that one will be flood, which is attached to Artel, which moves him along the way. And then I need to resolve the mountain, which adds another freaking rain. But now I've kept one spirit for just such an occasion here. I need to clear him with two. I oh, mean, I've kept one throng of life in my hand for that connection icon. So I've got two and I need two. All right, two and minus one is one. 
All right, well, one will still add one because it's the basic connect test. It just needs a one. Oh, no, it needs an X. Oh, but X is one. So I add progress equal to my effort, which is one. So I did get one on there. That's not enough to clear him. The mountain adds another rain. Did I just do that? Well, I did just do that. But yeah, we got three mountains in a row. So that's nice. Then I'm going to use the scepter of harmony and spend my last song to add progress to a being. So that will clear him. <sighs> so I'll read his entry again about the fishing spot. This fl oh, the flood gets shuffled back in. So maybe I should have waited until I know I can get that Sitka buck out and then another flood out on it. You know what? I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm not going to, I'm going to not do that last test because clearing him means shuffling. Or maybe I just, I'll keep the test. I just won't, whoops. I'll keep the test. I just won't use my song here. We'll save that. So he has one on him. See if I can pull this out at the last minute. Ah, so this was spent, right? Phew! Coming down to the wire here. So let's go to the end of the round. You know, ready, energize, draw. I got two cards left. And unfortunately, I have to add two rain to this during the refresh step, which means flips back to downpour. Oh, and exhaust your roll. So I won't even be able to return a card this round. Draw a path card, which should be the buck. I know it's a little awkward because I want to get the flood out. In order to get the flood out, I have to use the search. Oh, and I didn't even realize the flood has a presence of its own. I hope I didn't mess that up. All right, let's use our static sifter. I can use the other vittle I got now. Soothe two more fatigue. I know the top of the path deck is the flood. I need to get that out onto the buck. I could end the round. Honestly, I don't like this whole rain, the rising waters mission. There's just so many things that I don't like about it. I didn't like the way I'm supposed to track it. I didn't like the fact that my progress is not supposed to be kept between days unless you've completed an entire location and can somehow figure out how to log that. I don't like how hard it is i mean i don't know if you have to be better at the game or if they just don't expect you to succeed uh, but i really don't like being asked to do something that seems impossible maybe it's written in such a way that it will be forgiving like oh we didn't actually expect you to do all three locations um maybe maybe they do expect me to do all three locations but it feels impossible and i don't like being asked to do something impossible even if they don't expect success i find that very frustrating and i'm also really not liking this play pattern where i'm actively like i tried to get him flooded i tried to get him washed away in the flood so that i could then save him that feels really bad and unnatural and now i'm trying to figure out how to get this sitka buck flooded so that i can save it also just feels very unrangering to me um in fact, I think what I'm going to be doing is ending the round here. So I'm going to do nothing. I'm not helping him. I'm just sitting around and waiting for this Sitka buck to get washed out in a flood so that then I can save both of them. Um, I don't like that. But I think that's what I'm going to do. Because as long as I don't make any tests, nothing bad happens. The best way to draw the next path card is to make this test. But then I'm going to get fatigued by the buck and fatigued by the flood. I can use the avoid uh, avoid test to exhaust the buck but then i'm spending awareness and i'm also risking exhaustion here and artel getting uh flooded away but literally nothing happens which i if i do nothing which the rules say around is about an hour or so or an hour to a few hours so i'm going to spend about an hour or a few hours watching artel drown while this sitka buck lingers around and i just wait for it to get washed away in the flood so i'll draw another card draw the other path card which is the flood gets attached to the non-ranger feature being with the highest presence that already doesn't have a flood attached and now if i can clear both of them without taking more than one fatigue because i have one card left in my de deck i will have completed white sky and kobo's market but not golden shore so first of all i'm going to use scepter of harmony i can exhaust it and use x songs to add x progress oh no i think i actually need my songs yeah i'm gonna need my song so i'm gonna have to hope that i can connect with him but i, I think i'll be fine so let's use a sky whip I'm going to commit two. I need three. Three harm will clear the buck. So I'm just blasting it out of the flooded water with the sky whip. So I need, if I can want to afford a minus two, I need a total of five committed. I've got two, three, four, five. So I've soothed enough fatigue that I've got three cards here and three more cards in my hand. No connection icons, but I think I'll be fine for that. Um, so I've got five, even a minus two, I'll be okay. I got a zero. So that will add five harm to the buck, which clears it. Actually, it goes onto the lure quiet again, uh, and flood gets shuffled back in, but I don't think I'm going to be drawing anymore. So we'll just do that. To resolve the sun, which gives me another fatigue. My deck is now empty. If I take any more fatigue, uh, the day is forced to end. 
Uh, this also adds a flood token to the attached card. So now he has flood tokens equal to his presence. He can actually have infinite flood tokens attached to him until we hit the crest, at which point if he has more flood tokens in his pre uh, presence, he's gone. Um, but currently they're equal, his flood tokens and his presence. I just spend my song for that, which means I cannot exhaust it to add progress directly. I'm going to have to just use the basic connect test. I'll commit three spirit and no connection icons. But even with a minus two, I only need to add one more to him. Uh, I got a minus one, so that's two. So that does clear him. I also got the sun, but that's going to clear him. Add this here. And the way I've been playing it is I resolve all clearing effects before I resolve the challenge icon. So hopefully that's correct. But that's what I've been doing, and that's what I'll continue to do now. So he's clear. I'll read 48. I don't think it's going to matter. He says, I was just thinking about that spot on the Golden Shore. You showed me best fishing I've had in years. If you're headed that way, mind if I tag along? I'm afraid I can't give you anything for it, but I would certainly welcome the opportunity. No safer place than by the side of the range of a ranger. Not today. Soothe one fatigue. Yeah, I'm not going to take the mission. So I discard him. I'll soothe the fatigue. And then I'm also going to complete this mission again. We read that before, but with some quick thinking and a lot of backbreaking work, you managed to redirect the worst of the flood waters and save what you can. Thanks to your efforts, this location is through the worst of it. Check off the bubble matching your current location next to rising water. So then if all three locations are complete, read the following, but it's not. So I will go ahead and do it. White sky is complete. These are removed. And then when I go to resolve the sun, rain is gone. I take an exhaustion, but I can't. So my day is forced to end and my ranger collapses on the banks of the flood and we'll have to recover and be unhelpful for the rest of the day. So we'll find out what happens next time. You know what? Maybe we just read that now because that is ending day five. Uh, I'll be starting day six here at White Sky again. Uh, but let's go ahead and read 94.2, the start of day six. I'll stop if it seems like I shouldn't be reading it, but I want to see like what happened. So this, if you've completed Rising Waters, if you haven't, it has rained heavily for the last two days, but this morning it has finally begun to subside. You see a runner approaching, wet and ragged. After he catches his breath, he tells you of the flood damage done to the areas surrounding White Sky Lake and asks if you might be of his assistance by helping to clear debris and repair the damage. And there's something else, he says. For each location not marked off next to rising waters, record the location name followed by flooded on the campaign tracker. Then complete rising waters and read 1.07. A. All right, so Golden Shore... Flooded. I don't know what it means when it says complete rising waters. Does that just mean put it back in the box? You follow the man to a small crowd of people gathered by a wide, dark tangle of fallen trees, murmuring to one another in low tones. Calypso and Cal Ivor are there as well, speaking quietly to one another. Among the debris, there is a startling sight. Dozens of strange corpses deposited here by the flood. The corpses are battered, broken, and caked in filth, but they are all clearly one species, a biomeld, and unlike anything you have ever seen. You see pale flesh, eyeless faces, and long limbs ending in claws. Calypso approaches you with a haunted look on her face. Cal and I are going to help clear up this mess. What are they? And where did they come from? She places her hand on your shoulder. Bring word of this to Elder Orlin in Spire. If anyone in the valley knows what these things are, it's her. Travel to Spire within the next four days to speak with Elder Orlin. Gain Journey Spire Mission. Record 94.3, four days from now. On the campaign tracker. All right, so it's currently day six, technically. Uh, so I'm going to write this on day 10, 94.3. Oh, I guess I can put, I can also mark these missions complete by putting little check marks next to them, I guess. And Journey Spire. All right, so Journey says, you must venture to a specific location to progress the story. Arrive at the attached location. Read 1.50. And uh, yeah, when the mission is in parentheses, or when it has a card in parentheses, you take that card and attach it to it. So Spire is going to be attached to Journey. And yeah, we could look at Spire. Well, let's save it. I'm not going to look too closely at it. Just know I need to go there. Although I will look at it on the map. So I'm at White Sky. Golden Shore got flooded. And Spire is here. So I cannot travel by way of the river. So I'm going to have to go around either Mount Nim, Fractured Wall, Philosopher's Garden, Spire or Boulder Field, Cobos Market, Spire. I wanted to go back to the Northern Outpost, but now I got four days to get there. I'm tempted to just go back ways that I've already been. I like seeing new places, but I know I'll get like distracted and just get frustrated. So if I go back the way I know, maybe I can focus on luring quiet on the way. Like I'm mostly traveling, but like picking up as much prey as I can. And 
That also means I could like maybe get a prayer to leaving White Sky into the Boulder Field, maybe get a prayer to leaving Boulder Field into the Kobo's Market, and then just kind of linger in Kobo's Market as long as I need to to get the remaining prey from the uh, Grasslands deck. Because there's a few good ones in there, some two presents prey in the Grasslands decks. So that'll be my plan for day six. And then day seven, I can arrive in the Spire after camping out. That'll be perfect, right? So there you go. So rising waters nonsense is over. Complained about it a lot. Hopefully we don't see stuff like that again. And now I'm not sure how to read this progress thing either because it seems very clear. It says progress and the mission used progress, but maybe I have to wait for the campaign to specifically tell me to mark a bubble or I don't. So I guess that's the logic I'm going to work with going forward. Just don't mark any of these diamonds unless the rules specifically tell me to mark a bubble next to the mission name. If that's the case, it should not be called progress, but there you go. So yeah, I dipped into reading the beginning of day six, but that was day five. So stay tuned for our journey to the spire as we try to lure out quiet. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and bye.